A pile of hard drives and SSDs showing up on my desk can only mean one thing. It's new server day. Looking for a new PC this holiday season? Head on over to the NZXT Build Black Friday Sale and put together the system of your dreams. Choose the games you want to play, set a budget, and NZXT Build will handle the rest. Choose from a number of different pre-built systems, like the NZXT Streaming PC, featuring an AMD Ryzen 7 3700X and RTX 3070 graphics card. All PCs are also sold with a two-year all-in-one warranty. And if you order between 6 p.m. Pacific this Thanksgiving Day through midnight on Friday, you'll get 10% off any order of a custom or pre-built gaming PC, including any accessories or peripherals. To check out NZXT Build for yourself, click the link down in the video description. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. This one is going to be a pretty good one. Right in front of me is a one-use server, courtesy of eBay, that only cost me $121 shipped straight to my door. And this one-use server has a little bit of a surprise in store. You see, it will actually hold 12 three and a half inch hard drives. But the fun doesn't stop there. You see, this is not just a disk enclosure, it's also a fully fledged server. And for my $121, it also included a Xeon E3 1220 processor and eight gigabytes of memory. To tell you just how crazy the storage capacity on this server is, let's compare it to the Super Micro 948 chassis that I built my TrueNAS server in a couple of months ago. That holds 24 disks. If I scaled this up to the same 4U size, it would hold twice as many at 48 disks. Now one downside to this case, versus something like the Super Micro 948, is you lose the ability to have hot swap drives. You see, you actually need to remove the server from the rack and take the top cover off to replace a drive in here. But given that you get 12 drives in a 1U space, this is looking to be pretty fantastic. So what exactly is inside of here? Well, the top cover is a little bit different because it actually opens toward the front with the retaining screw right there. It's also a little bit of a bear to get off. There it goes. And that is one very large top panel. As you can see, there's a ton of empty space in here. In fact, the front two thirds of this server are devoted to hard drive storage. One very nice thing is all of these SATA and power cables came pre-wired inside of this case, which means I didn't have to source custom length SATA cables and have a whole mess of wires. Rather, I can just grab my hard drives and plug and play. Well, almost plug and play. Uh, you see, this server didn't come with any hard drive mounts. You have to source those yourself. Now the good news is the hard drive mounts aren't anything exotic. They're just some rubber gaskets that screw into the bottom of the hard drives and then slot in between these pegs, holding the hard drives in place and giving them a little bit of a shock mount. The bad news is if you shop for hard drive mounting or hard drive gaskets, you get results that are insanely expensive. On Amazon, some of the best pricing that I saw that was designed for hard drives would have cost me about $6 per drive mount. So that's four screws and four gaskets for $6. Now, obviously, I wasn't going to do that. This is supposed to be a budget server, and I'm not going to spend almost as much on gaskets and hard drive screws as I am on the entire server. So I sourced the gaskets myself. If you want to buy one of these servers, which, by the way, I will have linked down in the video description, I'll also have linked to it these, which is a 100 pack of rubber gaskets that are the exact right size, and this cost me $14. Now, that was still a little bit more expensive than it should have been, given what these are, but I will say it's a hell of a lot better than the $65 or $70 it was going to cost me if I bought the official hard drive mounting kits. Not only that, but for an extra $4.50, I picked up a 100 pack of 632 screws with a truss head, and these are absolutely perfect for mounting the gaskets into the bottom of the hard drives. So for just $19, my hard drive mounting problem has been solved. But what drives are we going to put into this? Looking back a couple weeks ago to the My First Home Lab video, which you can click right up there if you want to catch it, I put together three servers to work in a home lab cluster. And inside of each of those nodes, I had a pair of HGST 2 terabyte SATA drives. But at the time, I said if you want a true high availability, you should probably have some centralized storage. So I give you some centralized storage. So yeah, these are the six hard drives out of those three servers. And today we're gonna install them into this box, install TrueNAS, and give those Proxmox servers some centralized storage. I'm gonna use an Intel 60 gigabyte SSD to install TrueNAS onto. And as chance would have it, there is a two and a half inch drive mount right here in front of the power supply for exactly that reason. 
But the fun doesn't end there. I've also got a pair of 480GB Iron Wolf SSDs that we're going to use as a cache disk inside this array. We're also going to set up 10 gigabit networking on this box with this HP Dual SFP Plus network card. And by the way, these are only about $20 a piece on Amazon, and I will also have links to these down in the video description. Now, this tie-in motherboard does have a PCI Express X16 slot in it, and there is a cutout for a PCI card in the back of the case. However, this server did not come with the riser you need to install a PCI Express card. Luckily, I was also able to source that on eBay from the same seller that sold me this. And again, links for everything down below. I did make one slight change to the hardware inside of here, and it has to do with the memory. This did come with a single 8GB stick of ECC non-registered memory, however 16 gigs felt more appropriate, so I swapped in for 4GB sticks of also ECC non-registered. This board will not use registered memory. But I think that's enough for the introductions. I'm going to get these drives installed, boot up to TrueNAS, and I will see you after the break. Alright, so the drives are all installed and the server is up and running. Believe it or not, it's actually turned on right now. This is a 1U server that, dare I say, is house friendly. The TrueNAS install went great and it sees all 8 drives inside of here just fine. However, every build has a little bit of a hiccup and this one is no exception, as the two 1 gigabit network cards in the back of this server are not recognized by TrueNAS. Luckily, I do have a dual port Intel NIC right here, so we can still get this thing up and running today. And I'll order a DAC cable so I can hook up my 10 gig later on this week. But that is something to note. If you are planning on getting one of these and you want to run TrueNAS on it, you will need to install a secondary network card, as the onboards are no bueno. So I'm going to go ahead and swap this thing out really quick. We'll get the server all configured and then slot it into the server rack. Welcome back out to the garage. Now, one thing I didn't mention with this server was that it actually didn't come with any rails, nor could I find any. Now, they say that this is a Chenbro NR1200 chassis, but number one, that didn't turn up hardly any Google results, and number two, I couldn't find any rails for it anyway. So we're gonna go with the tried and true method of using a 1U rack shelf. Now, the server itself does have ears on the front of it, so it will be actually bolted into the rack, but the rear of the server will be actually supported by the shelf. And hopefully this shelf doesn't take up more than 1U of space, because I have exactly 1U of space down here. So let's get this thing out of the box and get it all mounted up. Slight change of plans. Um, I was going to put it right here under my KVM console. Unfortunately, it is just a hair too thick, and I can't quite get the clearance that I need between the KVM and my Proxmox server. So we're going to have to shimmy it up the rack just a little bit. Hopefully I don't have to move anything. problem. Uh, this is as far back as I can get it in my server. You can see the rack stud pegs are right there. I can't quite push it over them. Reason being is my air conditioning duct. 
is in the way. I got all the cables out of the way, but that's uh, that might be a problem. I, I have a little bit of space on the back that I might be able to get away with. It means I'll have to change my uh, wonderful zip tie mounting method. But yeah, uh, be advised, this is a very long server. All right, a little nip, a little tuck, and we are looking much, much better. Let me bring you around to this side and again show you my wonderful zip tie mounting mechanism. Uh, I managed to find a bolt hole further back, which gives me about an extra, I don't know, three quarters of an inch. And as you can see, we are still touching, but it's in. So yeah, uh, again, very long server. It fits, yay! That was way more drama than it needed to be. But it is now installed in the rack. A little bit more to go on the configuration side and then I can run this through a quick test drive, but I think we are well on our way. So, like I said, just a little bit more drama than I would have liked mounting up that server, but it's in the rack and fully up and running. Now, unfortunately, since I dismantled the storage from my Proxmox cluster, I'm gonna have to completely rebuild the Proxmox cluster and then configure the shared storage to go over there. So we will be doing that in the next video. Overall, I think this turned out to be a fantastic little box. Number one, it is not too loud, even though it is a one-use server. Secondly, the box does have IPMI on board, so you can manage it remotely even when the server is turned off. And last but not least, it's a one-use server that holds 12 three and a half inch hard drives. What's not to love there? All in all, I think the power inside the server is pretty adequate for the size that it is. That E3-1220 is not going to leave you lacking for single core performance, and while it only does have four threads, I think that is plenty of throughput for a small cluster like this. There are a couple minor things on this server I could complain about. The cable management is not the easiest, even though it is pre-wired, and the dual gigabit NICs don't work inside of TrueNAS, although I think that's more of a TrueNAS issue rather than an issue with the Chenbro server. So all in all, I am pretty happy. Now again, it is a very dense and very long box, so make sure you do have room in your server rack to mount it. Even though I have a full-size rack, mine was still a fairly tight squeeze. If you're interested in any of the hardware that I showed off today, I will have a link to everything down in the video description. And on your way down there, make sure to drop this video a like and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing to keep up with my daily shenanigans. And if you like the content you see on this channel and want to help support me in what I do, consider joining the Patreon or Float Plane. Links are down in the video description. Thank you all so much for watching this one, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. Beer for today is from Ninkasi Brewing Company in Eugene, Oregon. It is their Steady Orbit Grounded IPA, 4.5%. Oh, I can smell the hops on that from here. Wow. Kind of a mix of like pineapple and, boy, that's almost wine-like. It's like a mix of pineapple and rosé. Boy, the nose on this one, in my opinion, is a lot better than the taste. Yes, yeah, see, the nose I'm getting out of the bottle is much more floral, much more tropical, and quite a bit sweeter. This, I'm getting a lot more vegetation and like sour notes. It's not nearly as pleasant as I was hoping. I'm not really enjoying this beer. And that's a weird thing for me to say about Nankasi because I don't know that I've ever had a beer from them that I didn't like. Uh, this one's just not doing it for me though. I think if it were more true to the nose that I got out of the bottle right off the bat, that, that pineapple, sweet, flowery, I'd definitely be much more of a fan. Instead, what I'm getting is like two-day-old grass and no evolution in the flavor. It's the same flavor at the front of the drink that it is at the back of the drink. And there's nothing interesting to pick out of here. It's just kind of this flat, sour, vegetal, eh. I mean, it's okay, but I was hoping for more. But the fun doesn't stop there. You see, for $121, this is not just a three and a half inch disc shelf. It's also a fully fledged server. Sherver, Sherver. It's a Sherver.